Welcome to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. Prepare your heart for laughter and tears as we share the unpolished stories of the homeless and hurting, hope and transformation. Here's your host, director of the Union Gospel Mission, Pastor Tim Lane. Well, thank you guys for joining me. <clears throat> I got to wish you all a happy new year. It's the very first show of 2023. And so I hope you had a great holiday. I hope your Christmas was blessed and all those kind of things. I know a lot of us out there are maybe spending a Christmas. We spent a Christmas by ourselves and maybe New Year's wasn't everything that you thought it was going to be. And as a matter of fact, you're looking at the new year and you're wondering what kind of new year is it going to be. Maybe your spirits aren't as high as they should be or that you want them to be. And maybe you're feeling a little lonely, a little depressed, a little out of sorts. And you know what? I completely understand. Uh, this is the first year that we were going to get together for Christmas after my wife died uh, two and a half years ago. And so we're going to have the whole family over. All my kids were coming over, my grandkids, and they were going to come to my house. I got the food. I was going to fix it all up. And sure enough, a few days before Christmas, I got sick. Well, as it turned out, it wasn't COVID again, but I don't know what exactly it was, but I felt pretty bad. And at that juncture, I got sick on a Wednesday. I, I came home. I was feeling really bad on the way home. It was a long trip back. And and then I, I got home. I didn't feel like doing anything. The next day, I was even worse. Now it's Thursday, and by Friday, uh, I called the kids and I told them, listen, I can't take the risk of infecting all of you guys. And so uh, having said that, it meant that I was going to spend Christmas by myself. Well, as it turned out that, you know, when you're not feeling great, it's probably not as bad to be by yourself. But still, the whole thing of Christmas is past, the, you know, those type of things can wear on you. There can be a little loneliness, a little whatever, excepting for the fact that, and I feel all those things at times, don't misunderstand me, and, you know, not feeling good and all those kind of things and having a couple of issues that have come up. But the bottom line is that God is always with us. And it's not a cliche. It's not just something I say. Matter of fact, I warned, uh, I warned Steve and Ann and Mark and, that I might even read part of the birthday card. My birthday falls on the 28th of December. So uh, I also spent my, my birthday, I <laughs> uh, wound up going and, and at least having dinner with my son and my daughter and and their families. So that was a blessing. But at any rate, when I got in the studio today, uh, Ann and Steve came in and they gave me a card signed by them and Mark, our station manager here. And you know what? Uh, I was reading the outside of it. You know, we all joke about being a card writer, you know, that anybody could do that. You just have to come up with sentimental sayings. However, I particularly like this one. Uh, it started off and it said that God has created you and rejoices in all that you are. And I thought to myself, you know what? As many times as I have failed God, he has never left me and never forsaken me. He, he's always said that he would be there and he always has been there. Even when I felt he was far away, he was right there. Uh, and then the second one, and this is what really touches me. It says, God has chosen you and called you to be his very own. And absolutely, I believe that. Nobody comes to the Father unless he's been called by the Father. And, and, and so uh, to know that I am God's very own, even when I don't feel like I'm his very own, it's good to know that his arms of comfort are around me. You know, I'm looking out the studio window right now, and it is gray, and it has been raining like crazy, and there is flooding everywhere, and there is uh, all kinds of turmoil out there, all the things I see around the mission. But still, it reminds me that God is in control of all things, that the weather will clear one day. And even above that, 
I was talking to somebody the other day and it crossed my mind that, you know, if you go up in an airplane, if you go high enough, you get above the clouds. Well, guess what? It's a sunny, beautiful day out there, but we can't see it because the clouds are in the way. But, you know, all things work together for good for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And so what's that mean? It means that the gloomy skies, the rain that comes, gives life on the earth and it does those things. And the things that come into your life that that cause you pain and suffering, when you look into your life and there's gray skies and there's clouds and you feel alone and you feel beaten up and you feel hurt and rejected and all those things. If you're in Christ Jesus, they are all working together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And so then the last thing on the little card that they gave me says, uh, God has blessed you and made your life a blessing. So it's not always that your life seems like a blessing, but when God is walking with you, your life is a blessing. Whether you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or you're just a kid, the reality is if God has called you, he has chosen you, he's surrounded you, his arms are enveloping you. And no matter what your your life looks like right now, there is sun above those clouds. And there is a sun, S-O-N, above those clouds as well. And I think to myself, as we face this brand new year, and we see all the challenges, and we see all the downfalls, and we see all the things that are confronting us, it's easy to look and to feel discouraged about those things, accepting, and you're going to see this even in the newsletter, the end of the year review, because what I wrote I was thinking about is that we see so often in the Bible these two little words that every believer needs to remember. Every believer needs to remember these words and hide them in their heart. And you see it throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, and those two words are but God. And so when you are in the middle of the throes of a, of a storm, when you are feeling beaten up and overwhelmed— just remember that for the believer, those two words are still essential, but God. And I think about those words that must have come back and must have been there when David stood before the giant, and he's looking out of all of Israel, and here he is, and it looks absolutely like he would be overwhelmed and destroyed by the giant, but God. But God intervened. God sent the shepherd boy to defeat the giant because God can. And so, but God was there. When Daniel stood before the pit of the lions, it was hopeless. I mean, for, for crying out loud, think about it. You've got lions in a pit that have been starved for days and days and days, just in the anticipation that they could throw Daniel in there. The king was tricked. The wise men of the time, the, the guys that were around him, had tricked him into making the decree. And there stands Daniel before the lion's den. But God. But God shut the mouth of the lions. God threw him as he fell into the darkness of that cave with the roaring lions. He could rest. He could rest all night long, even with the jaws of hungry lions, maybe even curled up beside him, because he remembered, but God is in all our circumstances, and God is in all of your circumstances, if you are a believer in Christ as well. They taunted Noah for over a hundred years. He labored on building an ark when they'd never even seen rain. <laughs> I know what you're saying. We're seeing plenty of it right now. Well, they had never seen it. And still he labored with their taunts and their jeering and all those things because he remembered but God. And Jesus stood before the cross. 
and he remembered but the Father and but our mission. There's no doubt Jesus was the second member of the Holy Trinity of God. He is God incarnate. And today when we face the lions, when we face the giants, when we face the people taunting us, we can know that ultimately this is all a done deal because but God is there with us always. So it's very easy for us to want to give up. It's very easy for us to want to surrender to the loneliness, to the darkness, to the hatred, to the things that surround us. But the reality is we don't need to do any of those things because on the other side of this lifetime is eternity. And, you know, I, I, I've i mentioned it before, but I love uh, in Amazing Grace when it says, when we've been there 10,000 years, I've no less time to sing God's praise than when we first began. Well, the reality is that when we've been there 10,000 years, we're going to be praising God every moment of, of every day. And all these things are going to just wash away all the heartbreak, the sorrow. But don't remember, or well, do remember. <laughs> um, there's a song that says that God bless the broken road that brought me here to you. And it's really the broken roads in our life that make us see God more clearly, don't they? And so now getting through this part of it, getting through the gray skies and getting through the torments of today, then I'd like you to remember one other thing, and this helps me a great deal. When I start to feel those things, when I start to feel all alone in the world, which is never the truth, it's just one of those lies the devil likes to tell us, when I start to think about those things, I find that the one thing that brings me back to the side of God quicker than anything else is remembering all the things that God has done for me, to me, and with me. Okay, so has there been sorrow? Yeah, there's been a lot. Has there been failure? Oh, yeah, I have failed on a regular basis. I started off when I was a kid failing and, and pretty much was able to do it all the way through to, to today. But God isn't allowing me to stay in those moments of failure and has brought success as well. God has lifted me up out of the muck and mire, and the very first thing he did that I could never repay him for is he saved me from hell. He gave me hope and eternity. He gave me friends that surround me. He brought me through one place to another place to, to where I was the director of the Union Gospel Mission, which has always been a blessing to me until the day that I hand those reins over to the next director. Well, God will hand those reins over to the next director. But at any rate, so why on a New Year's, we've all done it, we all come, we always make the New Year's resolutions, right? I don't, by the way, uh, because nobody ever keeps those things. But here's what I would like you to see in this new coming year. At the Union Gospel Mission, we've got a lot of wonderful things that are about to happen. We have redesigned, uh, we have rebuilt the women's clothes closet. We found that there were some structural difficulties. It's all been fixed. We have done the first stage of our remodel on the old building, which isn't a remodel, it's a rebuild. We are moving on to the second part of it. We're getting all the permits in order. We're getting all those things done, and we're going to go full bore. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when, but probably March or, or April. Somewhere in there, we're going to go full bore on trying to do the, the cafeteria and then the third phase will be the old chapel. I have several new chaplains on board uh, that are helping to rewrite our whole program so that we can be a totally biblically based program. There's not going to be any 12 steps to it. There's not going to be any outside influence. It is all a biblically based, transformational, new life program. And that's exactly what the program is. It's not just give you, okay, let's get you off drugs and alcohol so we can send you back out in the world so you can fail again or, or so you can have a life gritting your teeth 
because all you want to do is go have uh, a drink or go take a drug. No, the New Life program wants to take all that out of you and God replaces it with his spirit so that you can walk in that newness of life. We, we are planning on great and wonderful things for the counseling. Then in addition to that, we are looking forward to the time that we can actually have a women's program for recovery as well. And so all that stuff is coming up in this new year. We have got a lot of guests lined up for the, for the radio show to give you a better insight of what our program guys go through, what pastors who are, are on board are coming through, uh, what people on the board of directors might be thinking. And so we've got a lot of, of I think, a lot of wonderful interviews that are going to be coming up. And I will try to get out of the way of most of these people. Uh, and I see that in the middle of all this turmoil, all this chaos that's out there, all this talk about, you know, the whole world and, and the morality of the world has fallen apart. Yes, it has fallen apart. But that's not for you and me, brothers and sisters. We need to still be what, what Jesus called the light of the world. We are the salt and the light, and we need to shine and reflect the goodness of Christ through this next year. We need to be those people that in the middle of the darkness and the gloom are shining this beautiful light of Christ. Remember what happens in a totally dark room if you light a candle. It drives away the darkness. It may be a little hard to see, but at least there's light in the room, and the light drives the darkness out of everywhere in the room, doesn't it? And I said, so I, I think about this. So you're this little candle and another candle and another candle, and we are reflecting the light of Jesus Christ. And praise God Almighty, when we come before the throne of God, that we can say that we told the people about your son. So those are exciting things that are happening. We are continuing to do our food boxes. We're continuing to do uh, all that God has called us to do, and we will continue to do that as long as there's life and breath in anybody at the Union Gospel Mission. We are committed to always following what God has told us to do and to do it in a manner that's worthy of him. And by that, I mean we need to do it with love and care and consideration for those around us. We need to be that reflection of kindness. You know, I think, about, I think about the woman at the well. And the woman at the well was out there early in the morning. And why was she out there early in the morning? Because she had had so many husbands and she led such an immoral life that she didn't want to be around all the good people of the, of the town. And so the other women would come out and draw from the well but she waited till they were all gone, and so she went out in the heat of the sun to, to go and draw the, the water from the well. And Jesus confronted her. And while she was there, the light of the living God was shining out of him. And how did he approach this terribly immoral woman? He asked her to go get her husband, and she said, I don't have a husband. He said, you have spoken well. In fact, she'd had five husbands, and the man she was living with then wasn't her husband. But that wasn't, that wasn't how Jesus confronted her. First, he confronted her with her lostness, with his glory, about the living water that was, that was hers for the taking, that the Son of God is standing there before him. And she ran to tell and to bring back those to meet this, this man who would give her living water. So we hold the same moral standard that our brothers and sisters have always held, but here's what we need to always understand, that we need to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ, never compromising, never watering it down, never making it less than it is. But you can't reform a society because the society of a whole, as long as they don't know Jesus, there is no moral reform you can do. 
But what you can do is you can introduce them to the risen Lord of glory. You can introduce them to the one who can change their whole lives, who can cause them to, to seek to be, uh, to be moral, to, be, to glorify God. We can do those things by shining the light of Christ into the darkness. We have a challenge this year. We have a challenge like we have never had before in the midst of the darkness to shine bright for everyone, to let them know that there is a better way. And we need to do it with love, never becoming pharisaical, but never becoming compromised in our belief, in our walk, in our talk. We never want to be there. But there is a there is a huge place in between where there is no compromise, but yet there's still softness, gentleness, kindness, mercy. Mercy for those that are just ignorant. Mercy for the enemies of God because you were once one. You may not have thought so, but the Bible tells us that, you know, none of us were righteous and that we were enemies of God before Christ. You can't save yourself, that's true, but Christ can. Because why? You're saved by grace through faith. This not of yourself. It is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. And like the little card said that, that Steve and Mark and Ann and the rest of the folks here gave me, think about this. God has chosen you and called you his very own. Man, that should light up the darkness in any room you're in, shouldn't it? to know that the risen Lord of glory has his arms around you, that he loves you. And so not only that, in this coming year, brothers and sisters who are in Christ, how many loved ones do we have that we need to let the light of Christ shine to? How many children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, friends, neighbors, uh, enemies maybe, that you can touch this next year and change their future forever? When God calls them and he uses you as the instrument to deliver his message to them, what a great honor that is to be trusted with the word of God and these lost souls. And so that should light up your life to say, I have a new perspective on life. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be telling people about Jesus. You don't have to stand on a street corner. You can if you want. You don't have to march up and down the halls of an office, but you need to be prepared as God sends people to you to witness his glory to them so that they can understand that Christianity is not just something that we say, not just something we do on a Sunday, not just something that we keep compartmentalized, but something that is us. Like that song uh, by Ben Fuller says, it's who I am. When who you are becomes Christ, who you are becomes a kingdom, who you are becomes that everyday experience, then we can truly say, you know what? I was lost, but God. And we can, we can walk and we can rejoice. And when the darkness threatens to overcome us, we can still be free. Because I am free because there was but God in my life. And so I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know this, until we meet again, my dear friends, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. You've been listening to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. If your heart's been touched and you want to know more about the work of the mission, log on to UGMSAC.com, UGMSAC.com. To donate clothing, food, time, or financial help, call 916-447-3268, 916-447-3268. Thank you so much for listening. Join us again next week at the same time for Voices from the Street.